Welcome back to uh, Organic Chemistry 320. This is Dr. Russell, and today we're going to talk about uh, something we already discussed before, nucleophiles and electrophiles, um, and we're going to talk about these in the context of polar reactions. We're also going to talk about um, radical reactions, but just not in this video. Alright, so what you need to know, you need to know first of all, uh, have a working knowledge of dipoles and charges and we've talked about this at length basically the bottom line is this you need to be able to identify polarized bonds and how do you do that you look for two atoms that are bonded together uh, that have a, a electronegativity difference of at least 0 0.3 and when you see that then you know that that bond is polarized and you can see here that X is partially positive and then Y is partially negative and the dipole arrow is pointed towards Y because Y is partially negative. All right? So you need to have a working knowledge of electron flow. We talked about this before that electrons always flow from source to sink never the other way around and have a working knowledge of bonding many uh, knowing that carbon can never form four bonds, uh, knowing that pi bonds break before sigma bonds because pi bonds are weaker, and we're also going to talk about homolytic and heterolytic bond cleavage uh, and homogenic and heterogenic bond formation. All right, for this video, we'll focus on heterolytic and heterogenic bond formation and uh, bond cleavage. Right, so let's look at the next slide what you're going to learn from this video uh, electrons flow from nucleophiles to electrophiles basically that's the same thing we said on the previous slide from source to sink uh, we're going to learn uh, what the reactive site is within an electrophile uh, we call that an electrophilic site uh, the, the atom in the electrophile that's accepting the pair of electrons we call that the electrophilic site uh, and then here we're also going to learn about substitution and addition reactions along with the mechanism. All right. So first of all, let's look at the types of some types of nucleophiles, and then we're going to look at some types of electrophiles. Uh, one thing to note here is remember we talked about nucleophiles. We gave it several names. We said that a nucleophile could be uh, a source. A nucleophile could be a Lewis base, a nucleophile can be electron rich, and a nucleophile can be an electron donor. Alright, so we talked about that before, this is just uh, to refresh your memory. And if a nucleophile has a negative charge, once it reacts with an electrophile, that charge is neutralized. And by the same token, if a nucleophile is neutral, when it reacts with an electrophile, it becomes positive, basically because of uh, formal charge rules. Um, so let's look down here at the bottom here some nucleophile types all right here um, an oxy anion is just a negatively charged oxygen that can be a nucleophile uh, carbanions can also be nucleophiles remember the term anion just refers to anything with a negative charge um, amines can be nucleophiles they're actually better bases than they are nucleophiles, but it, in certain situations they make pretty decent nucleophiles. Uh, double bonds, right? The pi bond and a double bond, uh, that pair of electrons can be reactive if you um, put it with the right electrophile, it'll react. And then water is also a very good nucleophile. So nucleophiles can contain heteroatoms, as in the case of oxyanion or water. Uh, oxyanions, I'm sorry, and uh, water uh, as well as amines and uh, carbon can also be nucleophilic in the case of a uh, pi bond or a carbanion. Alright, so on the previous slide we looked at some nucleophiles, now let's look at some electrophiles. A um, couple of key things, number one, electrophiles can be positive or they can be neutral uh, and if an electrophile starts out positive once it reacts with a nucleophile, then it becomes neutral. All right, and carbon can be uh, nucleophilic or electrophilic. I said that already. I'll say it again because 
these electrophiles here are all carbon electrophiles, right? Carbocations are good electrophiles. Remember, the definition for an electrophile is an electron pair acceptor. We also call them Lewis acids. We said that they were electron poor or electron deficient. And we also said that they were electron sinks. Remember, nucleophiles are sources, electrophiles are sinks. All right, so carbocations are very good electrophiles. If carbon is in a polarized bond with an atom that's more electronegative than itself, then the, that carbon becomes partially positive, and it is also uh, electrophilic. All right, in the carbonyl, you know that this is polarized towards oxygen, so carbon is partially positive here. Carbonyls are very good electrophiles. All right, so here um, we have an electrophile and a nucleophile. And so here, you see that in the electrophile, X is partially positive, Y is partially negative. So that means that the dipole is moving in this direction towards Y. And then I'm going to react this electrophile with a nucleophile that's shown here. So the nucleophile has a pair of electrons to donate. In this case, just for simplicity, we're going to say that the nucleophile has a negative charge. All right. So once we get rid of that, let's look at what happens. Here are my arrows showing the nucleophile reacting with the electrophile. Right. Nucleophile attacks X because X has a partial positive. I form a new bond between X and my nucleophile. And then Y leaves with a pair of electrons and becomes negatively charged. Let's look at it again. Here's my electrophile. X has a partially positive charge, Y has a partially negative charge. All right. Here are my arrows. Nucleophile is attacking X, which is the electrophilic site, and then the bond between X and Y is breaking. So here's my nucleophile attacking. I make a new bond here, and I break the X-Y bond with the electrons going on to Y. This is known as a substitution reaction. It's one of the simplest reactions in chemistry. Uh, the nucleophile simply exchanges with Y. So when the nucleophile comes in and attacks X, X and Y, the bond between those two break, and Y becomes what we call the leaving group. Very simple definition. It's an atom or a group of atoms that leaves in a substitution reaction. It's very simple. All right, so let's look at an example of a substitution. Here is my nucleophile. Uh, methyl sulfide. Notice it has three lone pairs and it has a negative charge. So it's very easy to pick out my nucleophile. I look for something that has a pair of electrons that can be donated. Here is my electrophile. And again, let's look at the charges. This is partially positive. This is partially negative because this bond is polarized towards bromine. All right. And so then the, the nucleophile attacks the electrophile at carbon because carbon is partially positive. And at the same time, I break the carbon-bromine bond when, when sulfur comes in and attacks here. And so here's my product. I have a new bond in the product between sulfur and carbon. Notice this carbon is red over here. And that's the carbon that's bonded to sulfur here. And then I broke the carbon-bromine bond. And this bond is orange, right? And so that pair of electrons is now on bromine and bromine has a negative charge All right if the electrophile has a polarized sigma bond between carbon and an electronegative atom like here here's carbon here's bromine bromine is more electronegative then that electrophile will undergo what we call substitution All right nucleophiles and electrophiles also do what we call addition reactions and the key to this is to remember 1 plus 1 equals 1. So in an addition, you take one part of one molecule, you add it to another molecule, and then they become one in the product. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's my electrophile. Here's my nucleophile. Again, my partial charges. Y is partially negative. X is partially positive. And so because of that, the nucleophile is going to attack X. X is my electrophilic site. This is the place 
where the nucleophile will attack because it's partially positive and it can accept a pair of electrons. So let's look at what happens. So here are my arrows. All right. Nucleophile is attacking X. All right. The nucleophile comes in, makes a bond between X and the pi bond between X and Y breaks. Let's look at it again. Here comes the nucleophile coming in. Right, watch the pi bond here dissolve out, and the new bond between X and the nucleophile is formed here. That pi bond simply became a long pair of electrons here on Y. All right, so let's look at an example. Here's an addition reaction, right? Here's my nucleophile. It's a carbanion. Carbon has a negative charge on it. carbon has a negative charge and then this is my electrophile right carbon here is partially positive oxygen is partially negative right so now let's look at what happens here are my arrows and then here's my product so you can see this carbon attack the electrophile here you broke the pi bond those electrons went on to oxygen notice the green lone pair here it came from the pi bond here and then I have a new bond between this carbon and the carbonyl carbon over here in my product All right so if your electrophile has a pi bond in it it's going to undergo what we call an addition reaction and we'll talk more about this in class alright so let's just recap real quick um, we talked about nucleophiles and electrophiles reacting through either substitution or addition. Um, we also said that nucleophiles and electrophiles can be either charged or neutral, right? With electrophiles, if they're charged, they're positive. With um, nucleophiles, if they're charged, then they are negative, all right? And we talked about substitution occurring when uh, there's a polarized bond between carbon and some other electronegative atom. Um, and then addition occurring when a nucleophile reacts with the pi bond. All right, so we're going to talk more about this in class. And we're also going to do uh, several examples on tomorrow. So hopefully you'll get a chance to watch this before you come. And uh, if you have any questions, just email me or tweet me um, or call or just drop by the office. All right, peace.